What's up everyone, Lance Hedrick here. And today we're gonna demystify the Easy Presso lineup. Over the last few years, Easy Presso has emerged as arguably the most innovative hand grinding company on the planet. They have so many different hand grinders for so many different purposes, and they kind of hit every niche you could imagine. But in doing this, they have created sort of a problem, and that is confusion on the side of the consumer. There are so many models that it's difficult to understand what you want. And so even here, I don't have one of every one of their models represented. This is only about half of what all they have, which is mind blowing. So I decided to take all of these, which are representative of all their lines, and I just put them through the ringer over the last few months. Some of them a little bit more recently, some of them I've had for a really long time. And today I wanna to be able to go through each one of them. So use the time cues below in order to help you jump around to whichever one you want. But we're gonna start right here and we're just gonna move right on through. So just so you all know, we have the Q2 Heptagonal, we have the X Pro, we have the J Max, the K Ultra, the K Plus, and finally, the ZP6. So let's get started. First up, we have the Q2 Heptagonal. This is part of the Q series, and it shares this series with the Q2 Pentagonal. The Pentagonal is more so geared towards darker roasted coffees and making espresso, in my experience. It produces quite a bit of fines, has a really fast feed rate, so grinding is not nearly as simple, but it's more efficient. It gets through a lot faster. This one takes a little bit longer, has a slower feed rate. It sits at around 99 US dollars, so it's the cheapest in the lineup. It is small enough that it fits inside of an AeroPress, and is really compact for easy travel. Now, one of the issues that a lot of people point out is the capacity of it is only about 20 grams. So if you're someone that likes to grind a lot more than that at a time, you're gonna have to do more than one grind. Now let's take this apart to see just how it's put together. So here is a Q2 heptagonal disassembled. We have a really thin aluminum, very light body with that little silicone ring around it with the Easy Presso branding. We have a pretty thick uh, catch cup that's threaded. And then of course we have the main body. This is where the collar burr is. So as you can see, this is all one piece, unlike any of their other grinders. And it's because the body is so small. So this helps keep uh, everything kind of in line because how tight it is inside of this body. It is reverse threaded. So in order to take it out, you have to do righty tighty, uh, but it's really righty loosey, lefty tighty. So that's how we put it back in, all right? So this is the collar burr. And inside of that, fitting snugly, is our cone burr. Now this is actually, the same diameter as something like the Comandante. It's a little taller though, so you actually have more of a bean path with this than you do on, say, the Comandante grinder. It also has a dual bearing system, which is similar to the Comandante as well, for a fraction of the price. There's a bearing here and a bearing down here. The reason the dual bearings is such an important feature for such a cheap grinder is that with a single bearing, you would have wobble in play. So there'd be a little play in the axle which could really cause misalignment during grinding. Having two really increases its sturdiness and its capability of maintaining alignment during the grinding process. And especially with such a small axle, it's really going to help create and maintain that alignment. So we have the dual bearings in here. And then we have the cone burr right here. Again, it's very sim similar to something like the Comandante, or as we'll see, a few other of these as well. This is a very common style burr with the heptagonal features. So there's seven sides, seven spokes, which allows for a slower feed, which is better for filter coffee or for lighter roasted coffees. Because when you're grinding with lighter roasted coffees, if you have a faster feed rate, something with say five spokes or less so that there are bigger gaps, it's gonna be a lot harder to grind that because the full bean is able to make it down. The lesser, the lesser spaces acts as pre-breakers. So you can kind of first crack the bean and then it'll more easily go through down that grind path. Then of course we have the base underneath that bottom burr. And then you have the base. This is the key, it acts as the key to keep that burr in place as you're grinding. Of course we have the spring which gives the tension for the different grind sizes. 
We have these two washers to keep even compression as you're uh, changing the grind size. As far as taste goes, this actually performs incredibly well. Going up against some of the other filter grinders from their lineup, they, it fell a little short, but it was mostly because it can't extract really high extractions without losing some of that flavor, especially as it cools. But as far as a filter grinding hand grinder goes, for $99, pretty difficult to do any better than this. And I've had a lot of people tell me that this Versa Commandante, it's either tied or this takes the cake. So something to take into consideration because the alignment system in this is actually quite similar to that in the C40, two bearings with without this being affixed to the axle. So they're both gonna have their inconsistency issues, but for the price, it is absolutely incredible. Now this was my favorite budget hand grinder, period, until Easy Presso came out with the next grinder we're gonna look at. The X-Pro, this is a recent release, and there's actually a video dedicated to it I have down in the caption below by Kyle Rosell that you should check out, because I won't be doing an in-depth one here, but the X-Pro sits at 149 US dollars, an incredible budget grinder that does everything. Although the Q2 Heptagonal that we saw before is even cheaper, this it ha brings so much more to the table, in my opinion, that it's a better budget option. Of course, if you want to save that 50, you have that Q2 heptagonal as well. But this microns per step is 12.5 as opposed to the 25 microns per step on the Q2 heptagonal. Now, a quick aside. When we're talking about the burr movements, it's important to understand how those measurements are being made. With Easy Presso, it's not the same way as with the Comandante. The Comandante gives you an estimated burr gap. So that is the gap between the cone burr and the collar burr. So what is that estimation? And then you have something like Easy Presso, they're giving you burr movement. So how much is that burr actually moving? And so these are gonna give you two completely different results. So if you're trying to calibrate between a C40 and one of the Easy Presso so lineups, you're going to find that that's nearly impossible based off of the microns that you can ascertain through mathematics. So let's say you have 30 clicks on a Commandante, the one click is 30 microns, that's 900 micron burr gap. That is not the same burr spacing as you have in an Easy Presso. So this is 12.5 microns, you can't just do the mathematics, 900 divided by 12.5, do that amount of clicks and have the same burr gap as you would on a C40. They're completely different. This is actually, in my opinion, a better way of displaying that because this is an objective reality. How much is the burr actually moving? When you're doing burr gap, it's an estimation based off of the aperture, but it's assuming perfect alignment and none of them are perfectly aligned with the burr kind of free floating, not being affixed to the axle. So keep that in mind. If you're trying to transfer, transfer numbers over, you will not be able to do that accurately because of this big difference. 12 and a half microns per click here, and there are loads of numbers to play with from espresso range all the way to filter range. So let's go ahead, we're gonna disassemble it, and we're gonna take a look at this beauty. Now we have the X-Pro completely disassembled. And so what we see here is a little bit different than in the Q2 heptagonal. Whereas the Q2 has that burr kind of just shoved on and held on by tension where you dial from underneath, this one has an external dialing platform. So you're able to change it here at the top. Inside you can kind of see the gear mechanism, which is that little plastic piece right there. And as you turn, it changes the burr motion, the burr movement up and down the axle. On this one, we have the burr affixed to the axle permanently, unless, of course, you use an Allen key and you pull it off. I do not recommend doing that. They put this on here in a specific way, and if you remove it and put it back on, it could be replaced in a different manner. So this is going to help you with grinding consistency. So even if it's not aligned perfectly out of the box, what's going to happen is if you grind, say, on 42 clicks, then when you take it out, and if you were to take the burr off, put it back on, you go back in, that 42 clicks will not be exactly the same as it was before. However, if you never change this, you'll have consistency every time. Whereas something like the Q2 heptagonal or something where the burr is not affixed, every time you take it on and put it off, it's gonna change things slightly because the alignment will change just a little bit. This is an incredible feature, one that I personally think is nowadays necessary in good hand grinders. If you don't have your burr affixed to that axle, I'm not that interested, unless it's under $100. This one sitting at 150 is quite great. So as we see here, if we compare this burr with the Q2 heptagonal, as you see, they're identical. Same exact burr, at least to the naked eye. Same height, same width, same design, same cuts. 
it, they look identical to me. Uh, if there is a difference, it would have to be maybe in groove depth, and it might be by microns. But I'm pretty confident these are the same exact burrs. Finishing teeth are the same. The tops are the same. The grooves are the same. So we're going to say it's the same. So in reality, this is just a beefed up Q2 where you have external adjustment. You have the burr affixed to this. You still have multi uh, multi bearing system. On this, you have the two bearing system as well. You have one right on the bottom, and then one you can see right on the top. So this helps keep stability in line. So not only do you have this affixed to the axis, the axle, but you have two bearings. Of course, we have this for tension, and we have this little piece, which this is really unique. If you look closely, you'll see that there are different styles of grooves inside of here. So up close, you have these equal sized little divots all along the edges. But if you look inside, there are little platforms right there, right there, right there. So the way that this little piece works is you put it through, you do a slight twist, and those hexagonal edges that are bigger are gonna sit on the ledges that are inside. If you wanna take it out, you just push back up, slight twist, and now it's out. So of course, in order to remove the burr, you just need to course in it a little bit so that there's a burr gap that you can push to push against that spring. So it's pushed up, twist, it's locked. Push up, twist, it's out. That is the X Pro, $149, and it has 12.5 microns per click. It can do anything from espresso to filter. Now on the taste testing, it's a little bit cleaner and more consistent than the Q2 Heptagonal, though there are times when they kind of tied. Of course, that's just that's just how grinders work, right? So with the X Pro though, because the alignment is a little bit better, a little bit more consistent, it does tend to be able to be pushed a little further in extraction while still maintaining clarity and without dropping off. It's a very good grinder. I wouldn't say it's the best as regards all of these different things in their lineup, but as regards competition, it's incredible. So when you're putting this up against other brands, it's gonna do much better than most any other filter grinder on the market. And in fact, if you look at my past hand grinder video with all those behemoths, I would actually have this in the top three, maybe in the top two right behind the K Plus with those grinders. But of course, we have more to look at. This is the J Max. And this one's a little bit decked out, meaning they have the new handle on here. So we'll go ahead and take a look at their new handle. Now, because of some recent things, some recent controversies with certain bends and cranks, uh, Easy Presso decided to do something innovative. And so instead of using something that's already out on the market, they decided to create something new. You see this little hinge in the middle. In order to make this more compact, you simply push in like that and then twist. And now when it sits on the grinder, it's more compact. Boom. Now, whether or not you think that's attractive is up to you. I think it's not the most aesthetically pleasing, but it sure as heck beats a massive arm sticking out. So I am excited about this. That being said, I'm not sure how long something like this is going to last because it is based on a little spring in there. Granted, there are springs inside the grinder itself, but it, it feels a little, the metal rubs against each other pretty hard. I'm worried that's gonna scratch quite a bit. And then maybe over time, if gunk gets in there, it might get stuck, but, for now, I'm excited about the innovation. I'm happy that this is now an option so that I don't have all these handles sticking out. I'm a huge fan of the Time More uh, joint and the arm of the Time More. And I'm also a big fan of on the Mazer grinder that you can magnetize the handle on the side. This is not my favorite of the three, but it's better than the alternative, which is just a massive handle sticking out. Enough about the handle, let's talk specs. So this is part of the J series at Easy Presso. The J series, in my opinion, is more so aimed at espresso, but of course you have the JS, which is part of the J series, and it has a burst similar to the ZP6, which we'll go over later, that is more geared towards filter. The J Max is kind of like the ultimate espresso hand grinder, in my opinion. You have the finest micron adjustments on this at 8.8 .8 microns per click. You have innumerable amounts of adjusting that you you can do and you can do pour over with this and the price point sits at $199. Now I think that is a good price for something that is an incredible espresso hand grinder. Granted, I don't think this is as good as the Kinu M47 and Kinu actually aligns their burrs in-house. So if you get that aligned on the axle, it's never going to become misaligned. This however is a second to that. I've not found another grinder that performs as well as this with exception the Kinu M47. So 
What you have here is external adjustment, which uh, that's another necessity for me nowadays is on hand grinders. I must have the burr affixed to the axle and I must have external adjustment. I do not like the internal adjustment on the bottom like on the Q2 heptagonal. And I do not like the adjustment systems on the Kinu, for instance, where it's on top. I'd probably use a Kinu more often had I liked the adjustment system a little better. External adjustment right here, primo. All right, now we're gonna take this apart. So we have this disassembled, and let's take a look at what separates this from the grinders we saw previously. First of all, what's really interesting is you have three bearing system on this, which really helps with alignment, which is incredibly important for espresso and for really anything, honestly. So what you have is you have the top bearing, which comes off like so, that sits right there on the top, is housed at the very top, okay? So you have one there, and then if you look closely, you have one just below it on that second layer. So right down there. And then of course you have the bearing on the bottom. So you have a three bearing system, which of course adding that third one is gonna help even more, especially when there's a lot of torque being applied. It's not going to change anything. There will be no give, no play. So that is an improvement from a two bearing, obviously, and even more so from some of the one bearing grinders on the market. Now, of course we have the, the, this piece which sits on top. This is how we're able to remove the burr is a combination of this piece and this piece that sits on top. So you essentially just push that burr up once it's coarse and then you untwist this, which is resting on top of this. That's how we pull that burr out. And of course it's affixed to the axle. And this is what that burr looks like. It's hexagonal, has a little faster feed rate than the previous two, which are heptagonal, and it is titanium coated. So this is kind of their ultimate espresso burr. It actually has some similarities to the Kinu burr, um, but as you see, there's a lot more finishing teeth here, which is going to really help you imp uh, in in increase the amount of fines you have to ensure that you have enough puck resistance for whatever espresso you're brewing. Whereas here, on a more filter style burr, you have tiny finishing teeth. So there's a faster throughput of beans in this one, whereas this one is going to crack them and it's gonna spend a lot of time finishing it out. It's also a little bit bigger in diameter and it measures in at 48 millimeters for the whole burr set itself, whereas the Q2 is at 38. Then of course we have the collar burr here. You can see the feeding in teeth are very different than the previous two. So for example, here is the feeding of the X-Pro up next to it. So as you see, it's much more drastic how deep these grooves are for a fast feed rate of those beans. And again, that's gonna cause a lot more fines production. Whereas here, you have a little slower feed rate. They're not as drastic at cuts before you get to the finishing teeth and the collar. Now, mind you, there are others in this J series. Like I mentioned, you have the JS and you have the JX and you have the JE. And on top of that, you have the JE Plus and the JX Pro. So you have the JX and the JE, which both come in at 25 microns per click and they cost around 129 around that area. The JX Pro comes in at 12 and a half microns per click. Of course, a lot of these differences have to do with whether or not it's a magnetic catch cup, which the Pro has a magnetic catch cup. Some of them are threaded like the JX, uh, but a lot of these you can see broken down on their website. Out of the J series though, I think this is the best one to be getting because this is espresso focused. It does what it does and it does it really, really well. So out of the J series, I'm choosing this. Personally, I wouldn't choose any of those other ones because you're not really gaining anything. Yes, it's a little cheaper, but if we're going cheap, of course, like I said, I'd be doing X-Pro or even the Q2 Heptagonal. But this one sits at 189. I believe I said 199 earlier. It's actually 189 and it does a fantastic job. If you're an lever enthusiast or if you're someone that likes to manually grind your espresso, this is the one for you, unless you want to pony up for the Kinu M47, which as I said in my hand grinder video I alluded to earlier, is the king of espresso. Next, we're gonna knock out two birds, one stone. We have the K Ultra, which is a brand new release, and the K Plus, which was the winner of my ultimate hand grinder showdown. So what are the differences here, you might ask? Well, this one sits at a higher cost at 289. This is 259. This one has 20 microns per click, whereas this one has 22 microns per click. They both have magnetic catch cups, which is really nice. Boom, boom. And they both have similar internals. You have obviously on the outside, this one's a little bit more rounded and curved. This one's a little bit more angular, a slimmer look over here, where you have a little bit more of a chunky look. This is more of a lance look. Then you have more of a, who go my cameraman look, okay? 
So you have Chunky and Slim, the two beauties. Then of course you have the cutesy little, the cutesy little arm that bends, okay? And then of course, I mean, look at that. This doesn't hit, look at that clearance. This one, bang. Hear the bells, 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 bells of no trouble. Okay, so let's see what the insides of both of these look like and disassembly time. So we have both of these disassembled and what we see are a lot of parallels. Obviously, the burr sets are very, very similar. In fact, they're probably identical. This one actually seems to be a little bit more matte in its finish where this one looks a little shinier. So I'm wondering if there's maybe a different finishing or maybe this one just has a lot more use, but this seems like it might be a little bit of a different material. I'm not quite sure to be honest with you, but very similar. The geometry is pretty much identical. This one looks taller, but it's because it's sitting on a base. This one is not sitting on a base. The bottom is the base itself, which is actually really unique. Normally they have this extra little piece on the bottom, but the K Ultra does not. And again, those birds, they just look, they look a little different as far as the finish goes, but performance wise, it's very similar to the K Plus. Then of course we have the collars, which these are honestly interchangeable. They're identical. Again, the finish looks a little different, but that could be just boiled down to usage. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I've had the K Plus for over a year. K Ultra is quite new, though I've run multiple pounds through it already. I had a little, uh, I had a little, I don't know, seasoning party with a friend who came over and we just, we were just grinding coffee, making cold brew, you know, just having, having fun, you know, like guys do. That's what, that's what I do on a Friday night. Uh, we sit there gr grinding some hand, hand grinders, you know, just like men do. I mean, that's what I do, so. Um, but yeah, and then on the catch cup, this is actually a pretty big difference. Uh, this one has just, it's just a catch cup, nothing really fancy. It's got that nice little silicon base on it, so it's kind of soft to the touch when you put it down. The K Plus does not have that, but it does have a blind shaker. So this is really nice if you want to use it for espresso or something like that. You can put this on your 58 millimeter portafilter, like so, and you can blind shake it. It's not a perfect fit, but it's pretty close. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what you want to say about that. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, but yeah, it's got a really nice tight O-ring in there, so you don't have to worry about any spills. So it's actually quite different than, say, the Weber shaker, in that this one doesn't have an O-ring on the bottom. It just kind of is loose like that. I love the Weber shaker. Um, this one has that O-ring because some people may not use it. Um, so it doesn't ever spill. You don't have to really worry about that. Uh, other than that, the, they're pretty similar. They both have the triple bearing stru structure yet again. So we'll just do it up close of the K Plus's body. The insides of the K Ultra are the same. So of course you have the top bearing, which I've already removed. Just below that, you have the second bearing, the secondary bearing, and the tertiary bearing. It's right there on the bottom. So again, you have increased structural support, increased uh, consistency with alignment. Just keep that burr affixed to the axle. Do not take it off. There's no need. You can get full cleaning with it on the axle. Brush, 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 brush. It's all good. Look at that. Now it's perfectly clean. You're good to continue. No need to ever take it off of the axle. Okay? All right. Let's move on to the final grinder, the anticipated one. The big show. Let's go. Last but not least, we have the ZP6. So if you are unfamiliar with this, go ahead, take a look at this video right here. I reviewed this even though it was not even in production and I called it the best filter hand grinder. Now fast forward like six or so months and boom, they put it back in production, which is crazy to me. You all pushed, they put it back into production. Now there are some differences and we'll, we'll take a look at those once we open this bad boy up. But let me just go ahead and save you the anticipation. This still is my favorite filter hand grinder. Now, whether or not it's better or as good as the previous one, I can't say because I don't have it in my possession. But what I can say is I've tested it against all the hand grinders that I have, which are a lot if you check my past videos. And this still without a doubt has the best um, 
as the best track record. I even had a couple of local baristas come over and we did a lot of cuppings with this, the K+, which won my previous hand grinder video, and the Q2 heptagonal just to keep things a little spicy. And consistently, this was chosen as the best cup, blindly. We triangulated, we did all these different tests, we kept throwing them around, switching them up, and then I continued to do it on my own and still consistently chose this. The great thing about this is you can push the extractions really high using this grinder without having that astringent finish that typically happens when you're pushing extraction. Like the Q2 heptagonal, you couldn't really push it past 22 on a pour over without losing a lot of its character. Whereas with this one, you could push it at to 23, 23.5%, even on a V60, and it was still tasting very, very nice with just a little bit of astringency on the finish. Of course, I don't recommend extracting that highly on a V60, but I was pushing it to see what would happen. So this grinder, Retails at 199 US dollars, has 22 microns per click, and cannot do espresso. If you I tried to go at the finest setting, I could barely even grind it. And so I would not recommend that. Anyway, let's go ahead and open this bad boy up. So one of the first main differences between this and the previous version is that there were two springs on the ZP6 Plus that I made a video about. This one just has the one spring. So uh, I argued that that probably helped with alignment by keeping things under tension. This one doesn't have that. That's not to say it's it's as aligned or not as aligned, who knows, but that's, that's just speculation. As far as the three bearing system, they have that in this one as well. And it's actually a really nice, it's really nice how they have it in this one is they actually have a little bit more space between the top bearing and the second bearing, which I think spreading the bearings out across the axle is going to help with alignment as well. Of course, that's speculation. I don't have a way to prove that. It's hard to get a dial indicator inside of a hand grinder, but it seems to me that that would be the case. So you have a bearing up top, which I've taken out. You have a bearing below it, a few centimeters down below. And then of course you have the bottom bearing. So it still has that triple bearing inside. And then of course we have the star of the show, which is this burr. Now the burr set, it's similar to the difference between the K Ultra and the K Plus. Same exact geometry as the previous model, but there's this like sheen on it. And I'm not sure if they're using a different burr manufacturer or if they have a different coating or what it might be, but there, it, the only difference is this one tends to be a little bit more slick, whereas the other one was a little bit more matte. So you have that as a difference. And then the collar burr is the same thing, same exact geometry as the ZP6. The first one I reviewed, this one has that sheen though, which again, not quite sure what that is or if it even really has any effect. But what I can tell you is what I was brewing with this was fantastic and I've been brewing with it pretty much daily since I've got it in order to really have a full understanding of it for this review. So that is the Easy Presso lineup. We went over the Q series, which is kind of a budget grinder with an internal adjustment. You have the heptagonal and pentagonal. Then we have the X Pro, which I think is probably the best bang for your buck in all of hand grinders at the moment, which is 149. Then we have the J Max, which I think is the best uh, under 200. It's 189 uh, espresso hand grinder on the market, beaten only by the Kinu. Uh, this one is again 189 with 8.8 .8 micron clicks. Then you have the 2Ks, the K Old. Ultra, which is the newest one at 289, and then the K Plus at 259. The big difference is here being, of course, 20 micron gaps versus 22 micron gaps, and a little bit of the exterior things about the rounded nature, the hand handle being broken down, etc. But same geometry burrs. Then we have finally the ZP6. So I'm going to make an argument that maybe Easy Press will listen to because. Right now, there's just too many grinders that they're selling, and it's difficult for consumers to be able to say, okay, these are so similar, which one? And then they might have buyer's regret because, oh, maybe I did want that magnetic catch cup. Maybe I did want this burr. Anyway, I think the easiest way to simplify the lineup is to simply have four lines. You have the K, which is a multi-purpose, so it can do espresso and filter both incredibly well. And until recently, it was my favorite filter grinder on the market until the ZP6 came back out. You have the J, which is espresso focused. You have the Z, which is filter focused. And then of course you have the Q, which is the budget grinders. And I think for each of them, you just need two grinders. You need a budget friendly one and then an advanced one. Budget, advanced, budget, advanced. So on each of them, uh, you have the Q2 pentagonal and the heptagonal, dark and light, espresso filter, etc. As for where the X Pro would sit, I think this could actually live as one of the K's 
because it has the same exact setup as a K, maybe this could be the budget K, and then you do a K plus or K ultra for the expensive one. You have the J max for the expensive espresso, then you have the JX or something for the cheap one. And then for the Z, you do the ZP6 and then a cheaper version. So that in my mind would be an incredible lineup that would be a lot more easy to navigate than the current stance, uh, where, where things currently stand because there are so many grinders. So I pulled out the Commandante Burr and the Obsidian Lego Mini Burr to kind of show you the similarities between those and the X-Pro, the Q2. They're essentially the same size. The Commandante is a little shorter, a little less bean path, but as far as the geometry goes, they're pretty much identical. It's like they took these and just kind of chopped off the top part. Um, and then of course you have the K series are pretty much identical as well, just quite a bit bigger. Um, so very similar burrs there. The one in the J Max has a similar, sort of similar to the, the Kinu or the Talmil burr. Not super similar, but pretty similar. And then this is kind of similar to the Etzinger burrs uh, that you might find in a Baratza or something like that. Um, but similar to, also similar to the burrs that you might find in the Orphan Espresso grinders because they use Etzinger. So it has that similar geometry, which actually shocked me the first time I tried it because I would not have expected such clarity and such low fines production from something like this. But you can see visually how different they are. Before we go, I'm gonna do a couple more things. One, I'm going to show you how to calibrate these grinders. Uh, this is how a few of them are calibrated. It's very, very easy. Then I'm gonna show you all of them side by side at roughly the same grind size so that you can see optically which ones have more fines, less fines, what looks a little bit more uniform, more boulders, less boulders, etc. And then uh, if you look in the caption below, I have listed out the amount of time it takes to do uh, around uh, 800 to 900 microns for pour overs and around 300 microns for espresso. So check the caption below for all that information. But to calibrate is you push that bottom burr up and you can either tighten up or loosen this ring on the top. And the tighter you get it, the less range you're gonna have. The looser you do it, the more range you're gonna have. So I'm gonna put it on just a little bit and then I'm gonna find where zero is. So I'm gonna go to I have burr lock. All right, so that's as tight as I can get it. All right, we're actually pretty close to zero as is. The red dot, the indicator is here and zero is there. I like to get it perfectly lined up with zero where the, my burr lock is. So burr lock for me, I like to do it at zero. And then I'm gonna push that bottom burr up, whatever play there is, I'm gonna tighten it out. So that now burr lock is at zero. I push it up all the way, I tightened up any looseness that was there and now burr lock is zero. And then I can go and burr lock, boom, lines up at zero, like so. Very easy, um, it really makes it super, super fast to recalibrate and that way you always know where you are. You don't have to count clicks or anything. You can just say, okay, I'm each number is 10 clicks. So I'm at 65 clicks right now. And you know, every time you put it back together, 65 clicks, it's gonna be consistent. That was a doozy, but I hope that helps to reveal or to uh, demystify the whole lineup from Easy Presso. If you have any further questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, drop them below. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to converse with you in the comments below. Please hit the like, the subscribe. The, all of this takes a lot of my time and this is not my main job. So it really helps to hitting the subscribe, hitting notifications, the like, leaving comments, checking out my Patreon. All of that helps me to do these things. As again, I said, this is not, this is not a full time thing for me. And so I put in a lot of effort on these videos. So anyway, any appreciation is appreciated. Thank you so much. I hope you brew something tasty today and cheers.